Mitchell, you've got an XYZ TC320 LTY here. This is a Y-axis machine from XYZ. How long have you had it? Uh, we've had it for about two years. And are you the man when it comes to the, the programming and the controlling of this machine? Uh, definitely. I'd like to think so. <laughs> and do you know much, of, well, you must know much about the size and what you can achieve with it? Uh, yeah, the, the maximum uh, bar we could uh, use on here is about three inches. If do you, you go, go up to three inches? Uh, we can go up to three inches, yeah. Uh, the maximum I've got at the moment is two and a half, but we're looking into uh, doing bigger bars. And the, the turret on this machine, it, the Y-axis and the turret are an integral part because they, they help you with certain functions like engraving, I believe? Yeah, engraving, uh, milling, uh, off-centre drilling. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're ex experimenting with a couple of things now that we, we haven't done in the past, which we are doing now. Taking the business into a different area. Definitely. Let's have a look at this component. Can you tell us what, what it is and what you're actually doing here on this? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, if I show you, uh, we start off with facing, it comes as a stock bar. Um, we, come, we start with facing the uh, job, so it's clean, so it gives us a datum to, uh, to work from. Uh, we produce the thread, uh, which all comes in different various pitch sizes, threads, uh, thread sizes. And then we can also do the milling, which you can see here, uh, which is four sides. Usually we get two flats, uh, sometimes we get four, so we can vary on those. The flats are the reason for the y-axis, essentially? Uh, yes, uh, essentially, I mean, that is that is the big part of, of what we do with the y-axis. And that's not an easy material to machine you've got there, either? Uh, not at the moment, no. That That is a hard chrome bar, which, which does take a, a little bit longer to do. How does it chip? Uh, it doesn't chip very well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about your, your coolants and stuff like that? What, what do you use to lubricate it when you cut it? Uh, we just used uh, standard oil-based sort of lubricants so and, and uh, pink uh, cutting fluid. And, and Paul was telling me that the machine handles this, this type of hard chrome perfectly. It, it, does, it does well with it. Uh, we've changed our tips recently, which have helped the process and, and have, have sped things up. And the machines here, before you had this machine, you were doing this particular component on various different machines, weren't you? I suppose you were turning, you were milling, yep. threading, yeah, then definitely. engraving. Yes, yes, we were. I mean, as far as the milling goes, they were going to other mills to be done, so and they would wait around. Uh, engraving used to be stamped, so... Let's talk about how much time you've saved. What do you reckon? You halved your, halved your throughput time for this particular part, definitely. thanks to the XYZ? Yeah, definitely. I, I'd say, yeah, diff definitely about 50-60% saving. Let's look at this control, because you, you were showing me earlier some kind of simulation here. This is a shop turn. Can you just show us yeah. for the camera what, uh, so what we I, have? If I press simulation here, it will run through this program, uh, hopefully. And this will give us a, an overview simulation of what an overview simulation of, of what's going on, where the tool's going to go, what tool it's using. So that's your CNMG tool coming in, rough in the component. And then you'll have your DNMG, which is your finishing tool. So that'll do the undercut. And then it will come in and finish it. And then face finish it. And then you'll have your thread uh, tip come in, produce the thread. So it's, taking the, the, it's going through every, every stage? And also, uh, if you see down here in the bottom right corner, you see how long it's actually taken. So we're up to a minute and you're already on the thread. And then you'll see the milling tool come in and start doing the flats. So it's telling you what your cycle time is going to be? Uh, yes. And this, this milling the flats here is using in conjunction with the y-axis? It is, it is. Or the y-axis, it's using, it's using, if I speed it up a little bit, You'll be able to see it better. So it uses the C-axis, which is the uh, which is the chuck, and the Y-axis. So you've got all driven tools on this machine. You've got a Y-axis. You've got a C-axis. Yeah. You don't need any more, do you? No. <laughs> with with this control, do you do any? Do you do the programming here at the machine? So what you've seen here, what we're seeing here, you've done on the shop turn. Yeah. Everything that you see on on there uh, with the programs. If I go into the list of programs. Everything that you see is done here. And, and is, that, is it much of an assistance to Shop Turn? Would this, would this installation be as much of a success as it is without Shop Turn? Uh, no, I, I think this is, it's improved um, a lot uh, since the Fanuc days and the G-Code days. And I think 
this is the way forward really for for you guys here. For us, yeah. Let's summarise, Mitchell, finally, this machine, XYZ, Y-axis, turning centre for you, been a, being a revelation for the business. Definitely, definitely been a revelation and um, hopefully we can look at uh, other machines with a Siemens control on to, to carry on improving really.